I'm Aiden. I'm Ian. I'm Alex. We're a nation of language. We're at Amoeba in Los Angeles. And this is... What's in my bag. But The newest thing that I got first, which is this album, Skintifia. I hated you away from the very start. I see you stick and see you smile. It's gone and broken my heart. Uh, I love Fontaine's, but we all got to see them play at this like amazing huge theater the day after we played in London. And the show was amazing. They are so good. And my favorite song on this album, it like changes all the time. But there's this one song called The Couple Across the Way, which is this like very sad, like accordion song that like made me cry the first time I was listening to it on an airplane. I was just like staring into like the middle distance, like weeping a little bit. I was like, Ian, you gotta listen to this. Um, but yeah, I love this album, it's so good. I will also do a new album, the latest Wise Boy. <laughs> This one really kind of came alive for me when we got to see her live in New York. I came to the album before this, Titanic Rising, a little later than everyone else. We were we were like driving around in Kansas City and I think the song Andromeda came on the radio and I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> From then on, just like huge Wise Blood fan, her new album, and in the darkness, Hearts of Glow, is absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna go with an old album, E40, oh, and Major yeah. Way. Let me tell you a little about me. E40 in the seal, I say we used to have to use sheets for curtains, socks for wash towels. I was happy as hell when my cousin gave me a hand me down. An artist who is pretty close to my heart. I grew up in. Uh, Berkeley, California, and he's a real Bay Area icon. Um, I actually grew up pretty close to the first Amoeba store, and so this felt like a topical way to start things off. I think this mm. came out early 95, I guess, yeah. Uh, and it's got some really great songs, some really funny interludes, and uh, takes me back to high school. Actually, even middle school, they would play a lot of E40 at middle school dances. <laughs> and I wasn't quite brave enough to dance at that point in my life, but I do remember standing against the wall, wishing I was brave enough to dance <laughs> as they played E40. BB <laughs> King, King Size. When I was like really young, my grandma was like obsessed with these BB King CDs she had. We had this like little trailer by the lake and she would like play harmonica along with the BB King albums that she was playing. And I would have a little harmonica too. And I was like, you know, maybe like five or six. And I was like falling asleep playing the harmonica, trying to stay up with her late. Um, but just those memories are really special. So I feel like putting this on at home will take me back. Love her, love you, Mamma. It's beautiful. All right, for my second selection, I will go with the latest dry cleaning album. Flies going crazy, wiggling and flipping. Emporio Armani Builder. One of the more upsetting album covers that you will find outside of the like black metal section. And another band that we got to see recently live, and it was incredible. Special sax player, the second show, came out. Anna Calls from the Arctic, just a really great song. I look forward to DJing that song. Yeah, hell yeah. For my next selection, going with ESG, Come Away with mm -hmm. ESG. Possibly the greatest band of all time. Just gonna throw that out there. The Scroggins okay. Sisters kind of really epitomize New York. I think they just celebrated 50 years of playing live together, which is wow. pretty That's insane. That's gonna be us one day. Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to see them play a couple years ago, and both times were just incredible. They do so much with just bass, drums, percussion, 
it just has such a coolness to it. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of put it on in almost any situation and it will feel right. Uh, and they do so much with a very simple setup and I just think they're so cool. Good when choice. I saw this in the stacks, I jumped on it. I'll do a pairing, which is, I'm a big fan of blur. Oh yeah. And I have always wanted to own Star Shaped, so this is a good opportunity. I mean, the whole thing about pop music is that you just, you know, you're ripping off as many people as you possibly can, you know? And the trick is just listen to the right people. And The Great Escape. This one has some real good classics on it. Um, I once tried to karaoke um, Country House. In the country. It was a flop for everyone but me, but I really enjoyed that. <laughs> this one, I feel like also the back is really, really great. Really cute. They're so really handsome. Great. Good looking bunch of fellas. Beautiful then, beautiful now. <laughs> Damon, call me. I'll do a different sort of thing, a book, Tom York and Stanley Don Donwood. We specifically knew that eventually everything that we were gonna do was gonna be this shape, yeah. right? Other than that, we had total freedom. Collections of poems and drawings, uh, all sort of like related to the Radiohead world. I like to keep strange books around when writing. It's so easy to like get into ruts and kind of start doing the same thing that having someone else to shake you out of it in book form is uh, a really, <laughs> really nice thing. And actually, why don't I just pair it with In Rainbows, which uh, we just don't own. And that seemed like a big, Gap. Gap. Oh, well, I guess I've been doing kind of a topical uh, geographical thing. I did the Bay Area, which is my first home, and New York, which is my current home. Uh, but Toronto is kind of my oh. third home, and so I wanted to get something from a Toronto artist, so I chose the new U.S. Girls. I heard from God and she said, I bless this mess, I see you doing your best. There's a beautiful shot of you do a pairing. Yeah. Meg on the front. Oh! U.S. Girls. Very nice. Velvet for Sale, remixed by... Uh, Tune Yards. It's all just fiction. And there's a great shot of Meg uh, pregnant on the front cover. I think she just had twins recently, so congratulations wow. to her. And I think this album deals a lot with the crazy physiological changes that come along with having creatures growing inside of you. Um, but it's also like a, a pivot into some pretty like beat-driven, dancier stuff, which I think is kind of a cool move for them. Um, Patti Smith, I have uh, like most of her books, but I don't have this one. I thought that I would make a book with some of these images because it's every day of the year, summer, obviously people's birthday. It could be about science, art, motherhood, something positive for the people. I love the way she writes. I love the way she takes photos and thinks about like objects. And we're a big photography loving band. We all carry our cameras around with us. And I sort of see myself in the band putting together something like this someday. I have a, um, a soundtrack. It is John Carpenter's Escape from New York. And to tell a little yarn about this, I'm going to tag in my brother and our resident film buff, Mr. John McKay, to tell a little story about it. Brother slash roadie. Slash, slash tour manager. Tour manager slash, slash. Videographer, he directed our, our music video. I love John Carpenter. I know that he made it with a man named Alan Howarth. I think they recorded it largely live watching the movie. The Escape from New York was all just make it up on make it up on the fly. We just sat there and composed. He could come over and a couple hours we'd get something done and he'd leave. John Carpenter, whenever people compliment him on his scores, he always complains that he would have hired someone else to do it, but they didn't give him enough money, so he just did it himself. <laughs> 
And I know that uh, for his next movie, he had the money and he hired Ennio Morricone to do the score. And he received the score and was like, I was kind of like thinking something more like this. And he played him his own his score. Own score and then he recorded <laughs> uh, Morricone, like we recorded some stuff and it just sounds like John Carpenter did the score. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. For my next selection... Holy oh, smokes. baby. I went with a big boy. So this is a Noi box set. Comes with a whole lot. It's got Noi, Noi 2, Noi 75, as well as two tribute records. And I'm actually on this singing backup vocals for Gorilla Toss. I'm very excited to own this, as I, I already do own the first Noi record, but I don't have two, and I don't have 75. And so, oh, there's also a 36-page picture book. Hey. Hell yeah. And a stencil, wow. This just keeps getting better. <laughs> and we can spray paint the Noi logo all up Everywhere and down the we go. Seaboard, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Forgot about this. Truck driver songs. Oh, wow. I love to hear the tires humming along the road. I love to feel the pull of a heavy load. I'm a truck driver, daddy, and I will be till I die. Truck driver's queen. Sounds like you. Truck driving daddy. Sounds like you. Hey, I'll take it. I don't know why I love truck driver songs so much. I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of like classic country music that just like puts you in a place and time, makes you feel like you're just part of the crew, it's gonna be a fun one. The latest Yola Tango. Heyo. This Stupid World. This Stupid World really, you know, hits me. Great songs on this record. A Celestine, Sinatra Drive Breakdown. I mean, it's just like classic Yola Tango. They kind of don't miss. Sweet. Uh, I'm gonna go with Mrs. Sweet. Cinda Williams. Good pair. This is her latest record. Yeah, it's coming down. Yeah, it's coming down. This is her memoir that she just put out. It's called Don't Tell Anybody the Secrets I Told You. Mm. Um, I think she's just one of the few living legends that we still have. She's lived quite an insane and fascinating life. A lot of crazy characters. Somehow Skinny Dennis decided he would take the rap, God bless him. So we spent the night in the county slammer. One night in that place was enough for me. Kind of having a little Lucinda fanboy moment this summer, and it seemed like an appropriate pick. My final pick is <laughs> this postcard that I found. Got a pig on a, what seems to be a blue motorcycle, and it says, girls just want to have fun. I really, uh, and I can't wait to send this to one of my friends. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for talking you. with us today. Yeah, Thank you for having yeah, us. This is fun. Yay. Ah!